Hello everyone, welcome to A Foreigner Farming in the Philippines. It's kind of a, a playing hooky day for us. Uh, we wanted to come, we've been wanting to come and visit my, Mike and Bonnie for a year. And we, were, we actually came here two different times and did not have the foresight to actually message them. <laughs> and ask them if they were home or say we wanted to come over to visit, we just came and of course they weren't here. Uh, I think I've been here once since the since the typhoon, yeah? I think so, yeah. I think we've only been away here once. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we're here for another visit today, and I always just think this view here, right next to their, their original house, that this is their original little house here. Um, I always thought that this view was just something else, and it is, I think. This, this, they've got basically their own little private lake here. Now, they don't... They don't own all this lake. It's a, it's an irrigation lake for the, the municipality, I would assume, or the state, perhaps. I don't know. But uh, Bonnie does own some of that land that goes out into the lake, and so uh, a part of this lake is theirs. And in years past, I don't know if you guys would remember uh, the video I did before. You can still see a couple pieces of bamboo sticking up out there. Uh, they used to have a, a big dock that went out there. They had floating tilapia cages all out there. Well, that's, you know, the lake got so low that uh, during the drought of a couple years ago, that just wasn't feasible anymore. And then Odette comes along, you know, uh, Mike and Bonnie have had their challenges just like we and everyone else uh, having to deal with the loss from the typhoon. But uh, they're back up and, and going and up of recent note is they've put in uh, banana trees everywhere uh, and opo squash. It looks like this is their, their banana opo uh, deal here. What are you going to do on this field here that's all cultivated? It is now um, planted with um, uh, pumpkin. Pumpkin. Mm. You know, we have done, that's another thing, we were I've been talking with Mike about what is working for us and what is not working for us. And uh, looking at the numbers on paper of what, you know, uh, we should grow. And there's a couple things that I could pick that we could grow exclusively um, and probably do better than, than having a, a bunch of different things going. But we were talking about having diversity and a diverse farm. And corn and squash are the two things that uh, theoretically on paper we could we could just go exclusively yep. to that yep. and do better than uh, shotgunning it. But you know you never look. I, I'm still stung from the piggery and having all our eggs in that in the one piggery basket, and then having uh, the double whammy of ASF and uh, the uh, lockdowns, COVID, and all the lockdowns, uh, and just in effect totally shut the piggery down because of circumstances that were beyond our control and so I am of the opinion now that having some things that are diverse and, and a lot of different things going on so that you always have some amount of return yeah. if something fails then you've got something else that'll, that'll keep you going that diversity between so you, you've got a constant cash drop coming up all the time yeah so something yeah just something. something just to pay the bills and the feeds and yeah and we're, you know, we're harvesting squash 50, 60 kilos a harvest now. Mm -hmm. uh, and because of all the rain, we were just talking off camera about uh, this last uh, rainy season, about 60% of the plants that I planted uh, got drowned out. Got drowned out, yeah. And so we're, we're getting those kind of harvests from 40% of what we planted. Yeah. And 20% of that hasn't been well maintained. Yeah. So exactly. basically going off of 25% of what we had originally planted and intended, we're getting to the point where we have to have a truck to deliver it. We're getting so many squash. And if you've got this whole area here, and those are the kind of like, they look kind of like a, a large flat acorn squash. We're talking about the same thing. They, they call them pumpkins here or, or squash. But to me, they're... It's your squash, you know, that I think yeah, gets there. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and I'll tell you, if you ever get, if you ever jonesing for a, a uh, pumpkin pie, mm -hmm. 
it's the same thing. And if you if you've got all that area there in squash, you're going to have a bunch of squash. Originally, well, I would say originally, but before that whole area there had been in um, eggplant. It was a bumper crop too. I think I remember Brian <clears throat> when you videoed that eggplant uh, planting over there last time. I saw a comment from one of your subscribers saying, "Yeah." Look at all the money he's spending on fertilizer, and it'll all rot away. It'll, it'll get nothing at the end of it. Oh yeah, the the, the 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 glass half full crew, <laughs> who know nothing about farming, who basically know nothing about nothing, but they've got an opinion on yeah. something. It's okay uh, having an opinion, but it's got to be sensible, you know. Well, and and, and based on some sort <clears throat> of uh, fact or yeah, life knowledge. experience, yeah. Uh, you know, I've come to find that a lot of people on YouTube are just lonely and. Attention sinking and just say something just to be saying something. Yeah, all the time. This time over there, the um, they plant is down there where it runs alongside to the cottage. I think it's probably about <clears throat> four acres, maybe planted, maybe in eggplant. Wow, that's a that's a lot of eggplant. And Mike was saying they put in about 300 of these banana 600 trees. Done. 600 banana trees. That's a bunch. And one of the good things about bananas is it's a, it's a, it's a reasonable, well, look, there's really no downside to bananas. It's a, it's a reasonably fast return because within a year, they're going to be getting harvest off these banana trees. Mm -hmm. But the good thing about banana trees is they don't, re look, you can fertilize them and they will do better. Or you can not fertilize them and they'll still do kind of okay. Yeah. Uh, they're really low maintenance. They don't require a lot of care. The fertilizing um, and spraying with those, then they get the second leaves now. Um, because they, they look as though they're quite strong now. They've only been in here six weeks, maybe, from, from seedlings. Not fertilized already but I was getting concerned about the, the amount of rain we had everything was just rotting and, and the, and, and the get the fungal infections yep. it was hopeless and yeah you just have to throw it away well I think we're on the other side of the uh, endless rain and and the good part is you know, another benefit of bananas is that he didn't pay for these that he transplanted these 600 plants that he transplanted he had bananas, and these are basically, I call them suckers. I, I think there's a, probably a different name for them, babies. They're, they're just, the, they naturally come out. Yeah, they seem to call them follow, followers here. Followers, yeah. okay. Um, but basically, these were all free. Uh, and it's expanding your uh, banana orchard is actually beneficial because you don't want too many. They they will they will make six or eight plants out of the same plant with the suckers the followers at whatever term you want to use, which is too many. Um, it's like having too many fish in a pond. Exactly. Uh, You've got to cull them out. Yeah. And so it's a beneficial thing to just keep expanding. And uh, we were talking about what good feed these are the leaves, uh, and if you're if you're to the maximum of you have no more place to, to put the followers, let's say. Uh, just ch chop them up whole. Just take the whole thing out and chop it up and feed it to whatever. Mm -hmm. When Mike had rabbits, they loved it, yeah? Yeah, exactly. It's their favorite. It was. Yeah. It was their favorite. Mike doesn't have, well, the typhoon kind of ended the, <laughs> the, uh, the rabbit project. Uh -huh. But, you know, we feed these to our pigs. We feed them to our chickens. Rabbits obviously love them. Uh, if they're ground up fine enough, the fish will eat them. Uh, bananas are, bananas are good. And we, we sell a great deal. We never have a, a shortage of bananas for the house anymore. It's just good. What trees are, is that a... Is that a coffee tree? 
not quite, no, I think it's, it's a native, I think. Oh, this may be, that could be a mango, that one. That's a mango? But this, see, the soil's not good here, because it's mainly dew right. Well, this was a hill, a hill, where am I from? This was a hill, yeah. correct, and well, it was just flattened out. Yeah. So this soil where we're standing is, well, there was probably a dome of soil yeah. uh, several was. yards thick over it. So this isn't going to be uh, the best uh, soil. I've always loved this place, Mike. Uh, I've always uh, admired your little farm here. How many hectares do you have right here? On, the, on our, what we own here, Bonnie and I. Yeah. 2.2 hectares. 2.2. So it's about the same size as ours, a little larger. Um, so there's the beginnings of the eggplant. That's the beginnings of the eggplant. Wow, look at that. So this is going to be dry land, or are you going to water this at some point? Or you just, by dry land, I mean it rains, it's good. If it doesn't rain, that's not so good. Well, yeah, uh, that's that's the whole thing. Now, you, you can almost guarantee, Brian, as you know, like Murphy comes along and kicks you in the butt when you're not expecting it. Yeah. We've had such a wet season where the, the groundwater is very high, of course, but that can soon go. Uh, so we still got the option of the lake to I can right. pump it up. You know, I, well, you know, I say dry land farming, but it's with a grain of salt. Even in the dry season here, a typical dry season, you'll get, in a two-week period, you'll get one little rain and usually a rain large, uh, substantial enough to keep your crops watered. Usually. Um, it's only rarely that you would have to, quote-unquote, water something. Uh, so you've got like a 75% chance of, of never having to water. But there is that 25% chance of, you know, uh, that you will have to do something. And it's good to have uh, a source. And it's got a pretty big source in that lake right there. You had this all in corn at one yeah, time, yeah? All, all the way down and across the other side of the road. So it's about the same as this all the way on the boundary. Uh, but unfortunately, um, one day we found that there was the, the maize was still there, but the fruit wasn't. Uh -huh. Midnight, midnight raiders. Um, <laughs> Funny how that thing. happens, yeah. <laughs> well, somebody had some very happy corn-fed pigs. Do you still have chickens? Yeah, we've got just natives now. Just those down there? Yeah. I remember you had a chicken coop back over there somewhere. Oh, it was here. Yeah. Yeah, another We've just cleared it. memory memory from Odette. Yeah, it was so diverse here. I mean, you had rabbits, turkeys, chickens, uh, pigs. And of course, all the, the vegetable stuff going on. But it's coming back. Yeah. Slowly but surely. Now you've got a bunch of bananas planted. You always had about a dozen mango trees, yeah? Well, the, the leaf growth is coming back, but um, the problem is with mangoes, um, the mangoes don't come on the new leaves. It's on the older ones. Ah. Uh -huh. And these were the kind that had to be sprayed, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. There's a little place area over there where it's all free rice paddies on terrace. It goes up up there. Is that yours as well? Yeah, it's uh, sort of thing. I I would look at selling that. You know, I would sell it with the idea of maybe incorporating that little peninsula where I've got the pumpkins. Ah. In with it too. Well, yeah, we had talked and, and uh, you've already sold one little parcel, yeah? Yes. I didn't know you had any additional land for sale. So you've still got uh, stuff that you would consider selling? Yeah, I was just saying that's, that's what, one place I will we'll consider selling. You know? what, do you, what is that, a couple thousand square meters? Uh, no, it's more, more, more than that. So. Uh, could be. Oh, there went my hat. Definitely don't want to be hatless in this sun, not when you're bald. So you do it, well, I don't know, maybe I'll do a separate land for sale video, but not today, I don't think. 
Uh, your your uh, YouTube channel is still up and going? Yeah. So you guys go over and give them a visit if you've got questions to Mike about uh, any of his possible land for sale. Mm -hmm. uh, leave a comment on his latest video and it's uh, what's the name of your channel again? Expat Living in the Philippines. Expat Living in the Philippines. You changed it and I can never remember the, the second incarnation. Expat living in the Philippines. So you guys go check them out. If you're land hungry, so this is egg, this this is going to be eggplant here as well. I think Leo's planting. You're going to plant somewhere else. Something else. Corn again, maybe. That, that's we've given the option. You can have it with the same deal as what we've had. Everything else, we just take your 25 percent of net profit. So you're doing it on a sharecropping basis. Mm. Yeah. That way we get a land till, and it's fine and it's clean. Someone's got quite a little fire going back over there. Yeah, I'm just wondering where that is. Is it? Oh, maybe it's not Marlon, no, our worker. Either that or they're they're making popcorn for a thousand. Well, it's like this to get rid of, but it'll slowly go. You know, it's just not worth anything. It's not worth making charcoal or anything like that. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what your place looked like right after the typhoon. I know what ours looked like. It just looked like. <laughs> Our place looked like the people had come through with chainsaws and dynamite. It was it's gone. And just, everything was gone. Right? Yeah, it was just you know a jumble of stuff everywhere. You just look around, you don't know where to start. See, this is what I was talking about before, and we have this same concern on our place. So this is one banana tree here, except there's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. ten. There's ten around mm -hmm. this, which is really about seven too many. Mm -hmm. But we, you know, we have the same. If if you're not, if you don't stay on it, then they'll get ahead of you. Um, and we'll just keep planting bananas. Yeah, I mean, all these smaller ones here, they do okay. Yeah. Really, the the root that's down in the bottom is what you, I hear, is what you really want to plant. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that they produce much better. But you can, you can transplant these, the ones that are already growing. But as I understand it, they, um, they will actually produce faster from the little root that yeah. you, yeah, the little um, yeah, the, the, the little root that's down under the ground. You can't even see it. You got to dig it up, I guess. Here, it's, it's fine. You know, even though you reckon, recommend uh, that it's no shorter than six uh, two feet uh. yeah and that's included taking the root portion root ball off it. and what kind are these are these the lacatan or the sabah i don't know i can't remember but i think all we're planting now is the ones that they use for cooking barbecue yeah okay banana cue banana cue yeah. that's all that we had planted initially and until I, it finally dawned on me and I was made or I made myself aware that there weren't any bananas planted that I could eat because I really don't like the, you know, I the really don't, stuff, yeah. I don't really, it, to me, if you have to cook a banana to make it edible, slather it with syrup or whatever, that it's not, you know, or sugar. Nah, I just want to. You've take, got to plant your own tree then, Brian, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. So I just want a banana that's yellow and you peel it and uh, you eat it like you're a monkey, the original right? Cavendish. Like, yeah. And, but Lacatan are the are very similar, very similar to Cavendish. Okay. And when I figured that out and figured out we could get them, probably now at least half of the bananas we have are uh, the Lacatan, okay. the the ones that I prefer. But we still have a, a lot of the uh, uh, Sabah, I think is the the name that they call them. But I just, I think it's the coolest thing in the world just to go out and... Go out and just pick your own... Pick bunch, your own your bananas and... Literally and yeah. And I don't know how much a full one of them, a good harvest. 
would weigh, it would be certainly, I don't know. Well, the, the uh, sabah, they're a little bit, the cooking bananas are a little bit less per kilo when you sell them. Mm -hmm. But they weigh like twice as much, yeah. the, the bunch of bananas. Mm -hmm. So we got, we harvested a, a bunch of those sabah yesterday, in okay. fact. And it was, it was this tall, mm -hmm. uh, point down there. So it was like three feet, mm -hmm. and it was, you know, yep, you could barely get your arms around it. And that's heavy, isn't it? it and it weighed, I think, uh, 41 kilos. So that one bundle of bananas was 800 pesos. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's money in bananas. And we have yet uh, hit the limit of what we can sell. Uh, we have people coming coming to get them. We don't have to go yeah. uh, sell our bananas door to door or even at the market. They come. Do you have any bananas ready? Are any available? Well, there's always a ready sale for them on those. Yeah, this is pretty intense in here. I can see you've hmm? I can see you've cleared out a bunch. Yeah. And and you got six hundred out of that little area so far we've got yeah so and we'll probably do this also and maybe even down here we do i don't want to sell any more land that's going to be next to jeff and sandy it's encroaching on on me and bonnie over there so oh, uh, uh. Mm. Oh, what Dang it. <laughs> right through, huh? Well, that's land clearing in the Philippines. I think I, I did a video on uh, Mike and Brian's place about how you need to, they need to go through and get all those little stumps up yeah. from the size of your little finger up to the size of your ankle for that particular reason. Mike just stepped on one and went all the way through his little flip flop. <laughs> And that's the way they do it. They just come along and hack things down, and a little spear is left. Yeah, I think these, going back to the suckers again, Brian, these, these are about a good size to take, you know, something like that. And there's so many, we'll, we'll never run out. And, uh, no, you'll never run out. Self-sustaining in, in, in a lot of respect. So. And that's the great thing about bananas. You never have to buy seeds. You never, once you, once you get started, you never have to buy more. It's an endless supply that they do themselves. Well, this is the area that Jeff has bought, Jeff, Jeff and Sandy. Oh, this little area right here? Yeah. Wow, all right. That's a, bound, that's a, a normal boundary anyway. And so this goes all the way to the road here? And how far does it come back this way? It's, um, this, we're actually using that as, a, as the marker. Ah, that little tree there? Oh, okay. 16 meters by 36 something like this. It's, it's just over 5,000 square feet. 500 square meters, you know. Ah, beautiful. Oh, yeah, it was news to us. We came out here and we didn't know Sandy and Jeff had bought this uh, little piece here, but man, <laughs> if I had known you yes. were you were selling that and I had the money, I would have bought it my own damn yes, self. Back today. He's left to do today to do uh, but what a perfect little lakeside Property. What can you ask for? Another little jetty out there for the boats and the bank. And exactly. Some little cage. So, some some um, agents have heard maybe some, some some of this land is for sale and sort of got in touch. Blah blah. They said, "Mike, you got a beautiful property. Yeah, blah blah blah. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's a look for development. Yeah, um, but your price is so high for some more." <laughs> Yeah, well, you've got to, so? You've got to compare apples with apples, not with looking pumpkins, do you? You can pay 80 or 100 pesos for somewhere in the jungle per square meter. Exactly. <laughs> but next to a lake, no, nah, well, you're not going to get that for 80 pesos. Beautiful. This is the little mini house that uh, Mike and Bonnie currently stay in. Where are you going to park your houseboat? Yeah. Right there? Right here somewhere. Mike has had a 
I was going to say a lifelong dream. I don't think it's been a lifelong dream, but he's had a years long dream of building a little houseboat uh, that he could put around on the lake with. And I was around with people wanted to come, you know, we'll buy a couple of kayaks and the rubber tube so people can have fun. One of our days, picnic, you know, things like that. Exactly. We're going to build a pathway all around the peninsula, walking. You'll get there, buddy. It's just, you know, it seems like us and most of the people that we knew here had to start over from almost nothing after the typhoon. And uh, Mike and Bonnie, God bless them, they, they were no exception. I mean, they had a nice screened-in porch there and uh, there was just so much de devastation from that storm. The refrigerator ended up in the lake. <laughs> and the washing machine. And the washing machine. Down again. <laughs> yeah, just things like your photographs, you know, your best, whatever, they're just gone. Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't just us, it was everyone in the area, you know. It's just... Yeah. And you've got some fish growing again in your... Yeah. In your uh, little cages there? Yeah, the one on the left is, is probably... We probably transferred maybe... Thousand to twelve hundred pieces in there. Fingerling sized. Mike at one time had a pretty big uh, uh, grow out operation uh, because he has, you know, he's got access to this lake and uh, pretty much continuous water circulation uh, because it's such a large lake. But, you know, so many things were put on hold. And then the lockdowns, I mean, you were you were basically stuck. Uh, well, Bonnie was stuck. I don't know. They've had issues. But they're back now, and it's, everything is full steam ahead. These are their breeding tanks here. I'm going to end this one up, guys. Uh, it's been good to, good to visit. Good to do a walk around. He's got some really, really big. You know, no when a stranger coming. You know. Yeah, they're not going to do it if I'm here. If I back up a little bit. He's, he's got red tilapia in this one and the black in this one. What's your opinion on the difference? I think... Hang on just a second. I think the... Um, say, the say again? I prefer the, um, the black type here. You prefer the black? These uh, hybrids, you know, the size is uh, much different, I do not know. But certainly the texture of the meat is slightly better, I think, than the black type here. Oh, okay. Um, and they grow about the same, yeah. get about the same size, about the same feed conversion. It's hard to judge because, because some of them are fucked up with the lake. And what I need to do now is start to crack a new gene pool. Yeah, the hatchery that we bought our quote unquote black tilapia from, the one in. Uh, I can't remember the name of the town, but their quote unquote black tilapia looked like black tilapia when they were fry, very small fingerlings. But after they were about uh, 10 per kilo size, they looked like regular old tilapia to me. Uh, uh, but they did seem to grow a bit faster. Hey guys, if, um, if you want to come and visit or be part of um, communicating with Bonnie and I on expat living in the Philippines, you're more than welcome. Please come and join us. So once again, expat living in the Philippines, that's Mike and Bonnie's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, how many videos you have up now? Thousands? Uh, I think it's not that many, we've got 2,600 
you I don't know. I know that he's got a lot of videos that 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 uh, catalog their uh, their journey. Um, a lot of informative videos. I mean, what I know about uh, hydroponics, a, a great deal of it I learned from Mike. So, uh, a lot of information on his videos. You guys, uh, check them out. Thank you, everyone. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe.